Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put the pistons and the pistons on the rods and uh, lubricate them, get them ready for installation. I'm going to do a sort of a dummy build to check our deck clearances. So we've got to put all pistons in, uh, crank them down, not just putting a light oil on the uh, bearings for the moment. Uh, basically, we want to put them all in and then we can measure the piston to deck height. Uh, We've got a range of, I think, uh, 0.35 to 0.70 on the deck height, so it can't go above 070. And so hopefully that will be all within spec, and then we've got to dismantle it again, and then check our clearances, clean all the journals off, check our clearances again, uh, ready for the final build. And in the next video, I'll show you how I uh, end gap the rings, install the rings, and the pistons are going for their final, uh, uh, final time. So let's get started and put the the uh, connecting rods uh, to the pistons. Right, now um, I've laid out all the rods. Uh, I've got this tape here just designating this is the front of the motor. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cylinders. And obviously the pistons here. Uh, the pistons are marked uh, orientation towards the front of the engine. Plus we've got to make sure that the rods are the correct way round. And those of you uh, probably know already, but uh, there's a flat side of the rod here at the big end, and then there's a chamfer here. Now this chamfer has to go towards the uh, fillet on the inside of the crank. I'll show you that a little closer uh, when I get to that point. So, um, so these are set up essentially like this. You know, the flat surfaces are together like this, and uh, this uh, reaching towards the crank. So. What I'm going to do is we're going to assemble one, take one of these pistons here, without rings because essentially I want to check for our piston protrusion uh, above the block surface because the block has been machined but uh, we've only just done a lick over, we've taken very little off and before it went to the uh, machine shop we had uh, plenty of meat there, it hadn't been machined before, uh, so I don't expect any issues, but we do need to check piston protrusion above the deck surface. And then obviously we need to check our clearances again. We've already bore gauged these, but I do want to do a plastic gauge check, um, just to make sure everything's double checked and we're, we're good to go. So. Um, let's take one of these, uh, let's just take uh, say number two and I'll show you how I loaded the clips in the pistons here. Well on these uh, pistons um, we're, we're using the circlip so I've already inserted the circlip on one side of the piston uh, and then obviously the, um, the gudgeon pin or what you call the wrist pin goes in and we can check that that's uh, seated correctly. Um, so. Uh, we obviously need a little lubricant on here, so let's get some assembly lube. So we're taking a number two rod and on the block, the fillet, this uh, chamfer edge here has to face towards the back because that's where the, uh, essentially the crank is and then this one goes the other way around, that way. So we're going to orientate this way around and this piston we've got an arrow mark towards the front here so we make sure we're doing that right so essentially it's got to go this way all right so we'll get a little bit of lubricant on the just put it inside the bushing here again we're using the HVL lubricant a little on the pin This way. Nice push fit there. And then we can insert our circlip on this side. And they come, the kit comes with a bunch of circlips. And so let's get one of those guys out of there. I'm just going to show you on this one, obviously I'm not going to show every single one, it's all just rinse and repeat. Let's 
simple little circlip design here, you see. But you've got to make sure they're seated correctly. So let's get that guy in there. Click there, do a visual check, make sure that's in, because that'll ruin your day if that came out. So that's one loaded. Orientate towards the back with the arrow pointing forward for number two. We'll check the piston protrusion first uh, and then we can do a plastic age. So I've just cleaned the housing, uh, removed the cap and we've cleaned these bearings thoroughly. These are new standard bearings. I'm going to clip that guy into there. Make sure that's orientated on the tab correctly. And they both both of these uh, shells have holes in them. So let me get that guy orientated. I'm going to put a little light oil on here just for this setup and then it gets cleaned off again for the plastic gauge but right now we just want to measure the piston protrusion uh, I'll put a little light oil on here and on the board I say this is just temporary oil just so we're not risking hurting anything right so what we've done we've orientated the crank to its bottom stroke here and just for safety sake so these bolts don't collide with the crank journal just put these little hoses on here. I've made a little split in them so they go in a little easier. And also they kind of help guide in as well. So we've got the, the bevel facing towards the back on this guy and the piston facing forward. So we'll bring that guy down in there. take those rubbers off now right there you can see so we've contacted the bottom of the journal there we're just going to put our cap on a little light oil see how this stuff takes a while just got to go slow and steady and just uh, make sure having it's done and the the like I say the beveled edge here goes towards this like little radius on the inside here and then flat to flat so it's a flat side little light tap Everything's turning beautiful, very smooth, obviously quite a bit more drag than uh, as you put the pistons in. Right, this is cylinder number five, making sure these surfaces are all nice and clean before we take our reading. Oops, zero it. And let's just move this guy over, just a smidge. We can be, let me see, you'll start seeing the register. So, okay, we'll bring it up to dead level. Ooh. 
Oops, I've gone past it already. Yeah, so anyway, uh, we have got uh, 0 0.35 to 0 0.70. 70 is the highest we can be, okay? So, 5, 1, 3, 4, 5. Looks like 5, 5. 0 point, that's uh, 1500 down from a the top limit, so I think that's pretty good. The this because we've got no rings in, we've got a fair amount of piston rock, you see, so that's why you want to take it on this plane. Um, because you'll see, let's say, let's just put it to whatever. I mean, let's just go to zero zero or something, shall we? Whoops, well, tell us five, so. See, I'm rocking it, and there's just minor amounts of movement there. Oh, very little at all. If you were taking a reading off to the side here, you can see how much of a piston rock there is. So you want to be able to take it on this plane. Now, I have seen guys, they'll do the lower limit, and the upper limit and take an average between but uh, I think it's actually a better idea to just take it from this plane so that's what I'm going to do so and I'm going to go and measure every one of these and then what we can do then the next job to do is to take them all out again we'll uh, do our piston ring gaps and then we'll plastic gauge the uh, the connecting rods and then we can uh, start to build this final so yeah uh, let's get on with doing that yeah so we got all the pistons in we've just got regular light oil on the the bearings and a light oil in the bores just to get our deck height so let's see what the breakaway torque is with all that lot in oh, not much of an increase actually so we were at I think 11.5 before, it looks like we're at 12.5 now. So, do it again. Hmm, starts to move. 11.6. 11.8, so we're just, uh, just over 11 foot pounds to get this whole thing turning, so I'm pretty happy with that. So. Right everyone, uh, now a few days later, took a little break from it, um, last time we had all the pistons in with just a light oil, I had to remove them all again and check our bearing clearances uh, on the connecting rods with plastic gauge. These have all been to the machine shop as I've said to make sure we've got the right clearances but we've got to double check that with some plastic gauge just so we feel absolutely spot on. So. What I've done, I've cleaned off this journal, uh, put, I've just taken this rod off and I'll show you the results and I'm just going to take this guy off and I'll show you the results. So let me show you the cap where I've got a good imprint of the plastic gauge on. And I'll just show you this one, I don't need to go through the whole lot, but uh, I will go through the whole lot, but I'll just show you this one. So, so you can see that, that's our plastic gauge print there, just a little off to the side. Um, and let me do this, we've got the millimetre scale, let me get my other pair of glasses, there you go. So we've got the millimetre scale on here, and I'll refer to the book in a second. That looks like 0.051 mil, 0.051 mil. I will check my book, but we're looking around two thousandths in the uh, old uh, imperial scale so we're almost just just a hair bigger than 2000 so that's pretty much spot on with a two inch journal normally a thousandths per inch and these are just around two inch journals so that's pretty much smacked on smack on which we expected if you remember i sent these uh connecting rods back to the machine shop because we were running three thousandths and it don't sound like a lot but i just wanted to make sure uh, it was within the specs because we want to make sure we get good oil pressure and no um, rod knock or anything like that. So 
Yeah, we're smack on two, two thousandths, maybe a hair over two thousandths. So that's awesome. So I have to clean this off and then for the ready for the final install. So next thing up, I'll get all these measured up. Next thing's up is measuring our um, end gaps on our piston rings. And then once they're installed, the pistons can go back in with the final lubricant complete and finish talk down and it doesn't have to come apart again so i think i'm going to leave the video for there so i'm going to carry on getting these plastic eyes check all our clearances and uh, in the next video i'll show you the piston ring end gaps because i want to try and get as much information as possible but not to make the videos crazy long so um hope that's good for you guys uh, so we'll do that we'll get our pistons finally in in the next video and then we can start building this motor back up we'll get our oil pump on our chain in probably saddled over here and hang in and then our front various gears for distributor and the drive gear for the injection pump uh, we've got a little o-ring that we need to replace on the back for um, the oil galley i've got to do that uh, and I think that's about it right now for this uh, video. So thanks for, for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next one. Maybe a bodywork one. It may be back to this again. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. You take care. Please hit like, share, subscribe. All right. Ta-da.